My name is Bon Thorn. I am from Cambodia. I was born and raised on a boat in a floating village. My family was very poor because both of my parents, they uneducated. Growing up during the genocide, you're in Cambodia during 1975 to 1979. The horror began almost immediately. Phnom Penh, a city of two and a half million people, was forcibly emptied within hours of their coming. The sick and wounded being dragged from their hospital beds. Dying children being carried in plastic bags. The genocide will focus on killing all the educated people. So my parents who growing up during that time, they didn't get to go to school and get education. And because of that, our family was living very poor. My father, he's a fisherman, and he also an alcoholic. There were times like whenever my dad drunk, we would jump off the boat and swim to our neighbor's house to hide over there until my dad fall asleep and then we'll swim back home. Because we knew that something gonna happen at the end of the day, he gonna beat us up. One day when I was seven years old, I got sick. I cannot eat anything. My mom started to worry about me and she wanted to bring me to the hospital. But my dad told my mom, just let me die. If I'm lucky enough, I will survive. If not, they can make more babies. I'm laying there, hurting what my dad said. I feel like I'm useless, like my dad didn't love me. Then there's something to tell me that when I grow up, I want to become a nurse so I can help the children that in the same situation like me. So the next few days, I feel better. And I went to my dad and told him that I want to go to school. But my dad, he didn't believe in education. At that time, I was 10 or 11 years old. One day I went fishing with my uncle on the boat, just me and him, and I was raped by him. So when I come back home, I told my parents about what happened. And when my mom went and told the police about what happened, my dad went and told my uncle to escape. So my uncle already left before the police get there. One day the village leader be able to find me and he told me that I need to move to live in a safe house because since now they haven't arrested my uncle yet. So for my safety, I had to move to live over there. After that, I moved to live in that center, which is with a lot of girls that been trafficked and went through the situation like me. The counselor will come to me and talk to me about what I've been through. And then one day, she told me about Jesus. She told me about how he died on the cross to love and forgive those people, even those that sins against him. And I cannot understand any of that because my dad and my uncle, who I can see and talk to, cannot even love me, then how can God that I never know, I never met before, love me. And it's really hard for me to forgive them. While I'm, I am living in that center, I also get to go to church every Sunday. And one time, they have a three-day Bible study. Then at the end of the day of the class, the teacher brought in the red and the green box. And the teacher told us that that was the special gift for us. And when we heard the word gift, we were so excited because growing up, we never celebrate birthday or Christmas. So that was my first gift. And at that time, I was 13 or 14 years old. So all my friend and I, we saw the gift and we tried our best to behave. For me and my friend, it was my first gift. And to wait all my friend to get the box, and to count one, two, three, it seems so long. So we just go ahead and open the box. Wow. 
When I opened my shoebox, the first thing I saw was a new pair of flip-flops. And those mean a lot to me because living in that center, I only get to buy shoes once a year. So that's an extra pair for me. So it's so special. Then there's another item that I love so much in that box was the stuffed animal. So I used to grow up and eat animal. I never knew that they can make an animal so soft that we can snuggle with. Like growing up, I had no toys, no TVs. I saw the stuffed animal. While I looked through the item in my shoebox, this question came into my mind. I asked myself that, who did this? Like, who sent me this gift? Because they don't know who I am. Then I start to remember the teacher mentioned that this is from the people that love God and they want to bless us with this gift. The shoebox showing me that even though my dad didn't love me, he didn't want me, but there's a father in heaven that loves me so much and he, he loved me so much that he can make someone that don't even know who I am to send me the box to show me that I am loved and I am valuable. Even though my early father didn't love me, but there's a heavenly father that's loved me. Now I'm going to college, pursuing my childhood dream to become a nurse. The box is not just about new items in the box, but it's about the real joys and the real love that will last with me and with those children forever. It's the box that helps them to find the true love and the true hope for their life.